The word maqamat is an Arabic word which refers to the musical modes used in singing and making music. These modes are used to simply turn a simple poem into a song by making the words follow a certain tune or melody. These maqamat are derived from the tunes used by people in their singing and music. That's why it is actually called al maqamatul musiqiyya the musical or melodic modes. That is why this is a science that preceded the Qur'an and its recitation with hundreds if not thousands of years. And there are many different maqamat, and these are the most famous ones. Al-Bayyat, Al-Rast, Al-Nahawand, Al-Saba, Al-Hijaz, and there are many other different modes. Each of these maqamat evokes a certain feeling, like humility, compassion, sadness, spiritual and powerful feelings, and so on. And since maqamat evokes certain emotions, there comes a very frequently asked question. Can we recite the Qur'an using the maqamat? And before we can answer this question comprehensively, we need to distinguish between two different types of recitations. The first one is reciting the Qur'an with tunes that a person naturally comes up with, without much or any conscious effort at all. And this is what most people do when they try to beautify their voices while reciting the Qur'an. So everyone who recites the Qur'an in a melodious manner would not go beyond that simple way of coming up with a tune. And this type of recitation is permissible, and it is even mustahab, so it is encouraged. It is a type of melodious recitation that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, meant when he said, He is not one of us who does not beautify his voice for the Qur'an. So in this case, if your recitation happens to come close or is similar to one of the maqamat in your attempt to beautify your recitation, that is not a problem, it is actually praiseworthy. And on the other side, another recitation with developed tunes and musical rhythms that can only be acquired by learning and training. In other words, you go and study the signs of maqamat which, by the way, can only be done at a music school. In order to be able to deliberately follow certain measures and have vocal control, without which these maqamat cannot be done properly. So you learn the maqamat and then start deliberately applying them on the word of Allah. This is considered by the majority of scholars of Islam as bid'ah and is therefore not permissible. But why is it not allowed, and what are the limits, so that we know we should not cross them? There are many reasons for that, and we'll try to use as many examples as possible to highlight this in the best of ways so that you can understand the concept. So the first reason is that reciting the Qur'an has its own measures and vocal control, which is the study of Tajweed, which has been transmitted from the time of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him. These Qur'anic measures of Tajweed are not and cannot be in accord with the measures as dictated by the rules of those musical tunes of maqamat that are used in singing. So if we try to do that, you would have no choice but to undermine the measures of the Qur'an and the Tajweed, which of course you should not do. The second reason is consciously applying musical maqamat and carefully crafted tunes that are normally used for singing on the Qur'an is showing disrespect to the Book of Allah and mixing it with things that it should not be with. While we as Muslims should elevate the Word of Allah and treat it with the utmost respect. The third reason, when you recite the Qur'an using the maqamat, you have to put your focus on the tune while reciting to get the tune right. And this is far from the main purpose of the Qur'an, which is pondering over the word of Allah and taking lessons from it. And this purpose is clearly stated in Surah Sa'd.
كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب Make no mistake, I'm not saying you should not make your voice as beautiful as you can. But it should not be your main focus or your main purpose when reciting the Qur'an, or even make it a higher priority than thinking and pondering about the word of Allah. Now let us consider the following examples so that you can understand what I mean with exaggerated or crafted melodies and deliberately adding them to the Qur'an. Now here we can see right away that there is a lot of exaggeration in adding tunes and melodies to the word of Allah. And most importantly, we see that there is also exaggeration in the ghunna and the natural mad of certain words. And this is exactly the problem that happens when you try to follow the rules of the maqamat and put it above the rules of tajweed and the Qur'an. And here we can clearly see that he's repeating the same word, regardless of what it means, just to show off the melodies that he can add to the word of Allah, which is obviously not the main purpose of the Qur'an. <laughs> Here again we notice how the focusing on the maqamat and the melody you add to the recitation can take your heart completely off the Qur'an and its meanings. He even compares the reciter at a certain point in this video to one of the singers that is well known in Egypt. Alright, so now we know what the limits are when it comes to reciting the Qur'an. And what is the most suitable way to recite the Qur'an? which is just by adding your natural way of recitation without deliberately trying to follow a certain melody or a certain maqam. But what about listening to someone who recites the Qur'an using the maqamat? Is that possible? And in this case, scholars say it is permissible to listen as long as 1. The reciter follows the measures of the Qur'an and the rules of tajweed since listening to irregular recitations can eventually make you make mistakes in your own recitation. And second, if it doesn't distract you from pondering over the meaning of the Qur'an and won't make you attach to the melody and the tunes of the reciter, then it should not be a problem. And to understand more what that means, let us look at this example, but most importantly, let's read along the verses that the reciter is reading and let us see how the listeners react to these verses. 
كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح فكذبوا عبدنا وقالوا مجنون وازدجر Now, as you could see, the reciter was reading about accusing one of the prophets of Allah with madness and about Allah sending down punishment. And yet the reaction of the listeners was pure excitement and admiration, which was clearly not about the meaning of the verse, but about the tunes produced while reading these verses. So in short, the Qur'an was revealed to think about its meaning and learn from it. And when we recite it, we should always do our best to beautify our voices for the Qur'an without exaggeration or precisely following musical modes that are normally used for songs. And you can listen to any recitation that you like and it touches your heart as long as it follows the rules of Tajweed and it doesn't make you only focus on the sounds. And finally, please note that all the opinions and rulings including in this video are not mine because I'm not a scholar. These opinions were taken from scholars like Ibn Baz, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Al-Qayyim, Al-Qurtubi and many others. So please check the sources that I used to prepare this video if you want to know more information about this topic. You will find all the links and sources in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope you have learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.